Welcome back. In the last episode, we created our first component. We set up this component originally called my cat, but then we named it primary button. And we talked about the different sort of ways we might be using components. And components can do so much. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about now uh, examples of these single page web applications. And there are a lot of them out there. And the way this sort of is structured and sort of where you're going with this is you build a single page web app and then it's probably going to connect to an API or of some type. And then you're going to consume some data and then loop through that data or you're going to push some data back towards the API and eventually store it in a database. Well, Vue makes that all happen. Uh, of course, there's other technologies that can do the same. But that's sort of the general sense of things. Then your app is split up into multiple components. These components might interact with one another or be inside one another. Uh, an example of a single page web app would be moodzer.com. So this is moodzer.com. And right there, we loaded our view app. Um, pretty much the entire view app was loaded. So all of the components. Uh, that were sort of necessary for this initial pages. As you might load another component, it might load other components as that component is needed. So this is, looks like just a basic HTML page. Uh, it has a login and a join, and these pop open in modals. Uh, these are view components. So this right here is a view component. And if I close that and open this one, that's another view component. If I was then to, for example, log into this or continue with Facebook or click forgot your password, those would take me to other view components. Uh, Moods are makes mood boards and you can kind of see a preview of what's going on here. Uh, they're changing colors and applying different effects to it. Uh, moods are, uh, when I designed it, they're, I've, I've sort of designed moods are a couple different times now in different ways as the different versions have been created. The identification is each unit, for example, is a component. That little palette right here is a component. This color picker uh, system is a component. This here, uh, effects, is a single component. Now, I didn't get into like what we did here where this button, for example, or this login button, or get started for free, or components. I just used regular button HTML tags. It wasn't really necessary to reinvent the wheel as the buttons already exist and you can write some classes to it, right? So you got to identify as like what level of control do I really need? So you can check out Moodzer as an example of a single page web app. Now there's a tons of them out there. And if you did a simple search for a view, uh, single page web apps, you'll be surprised. And chances are most of the products that you're using are actually single page web apps. So I'm going to jump back to our files here. And we've so far created this thing called primary button to show you as an example. And we passed in a value property and then referenced it inside properties. And then we have value and string. Well, what if uh, I wanted to make this say a counter? So I could see a count value and whenever I hit the button, it just sort of adds onto that value. But then I want to be able to name it so I could make it reusable, essentially. So how might I do something like that? And what do I all mean by all of that? Well, I'm going to go back to our original page. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to go to app.view and I'm going to remove the hello world. I essentially just deleted it. Now the component's not gone. I'm just not referencing it. Right now we have two uh, essential components here, primary button and primary button again. Uh, they're referencing the same template essentially, but they're getting different values. So I might make one say number of cats and another one that says like number of dogs. So those are my two buttons here. I then could go to my primary button and I could make this into a counter. So instead of it just saying the value inside the button text, I might set this up as like an H2 and say the value there. And then I could say something like add. Uh, and then here I could say something like the count. 
And maybe I want to put uh, the count in an H1. And like that. That looks pretty good. So when I add, I click the add button, it's going to add to this count value and then it's going to add the values essentially to keep adding. Well, I need to keep track of this value called count. Well, in view uh, uh, sort of basics, I would write something like comma data. And then in here in data, I wrote data. I would write something like count colon and then I maybe would start it at zero. And if I save this and refresh, I don't see the count values. And I'm like, what's going on? Why did I make a mistake? Well, I know the answer to this, but let's explore this. It says I have two warnings, and there's obviously some errors here. I don't really know what the errors are, but if I click on lint over here, and then I say run the task, It'll tell me, it says mixed spacing and tabs. No mixed spacing and tabs. So it doesn't like that I have uh, spaces and tabs inside the primary component on line 15. Uh, error process of code. It also, if you noticed, it automatically converted the data function data into this different syntax. Let me tab this in, kind of make it look nicer. Okay, so bring that down like that. And now we can rerun lint and mix spaces and tabs on line 19. Okay, I think that all actually resolves some of that for us. So I'm gonna just go back to this for now and talk about this. So it says data colon function. When you run data, it needs to be inside of a component. So like the way we set up data before, it was all in the view instance. Now that data is in the component, we need to run it as a function. And so simply just putting function, uh, parentheses, curly brackets, and then we need to return that value. So we're going to return the value here. I see where it's messing up the spaces. Okay. Uh, and that needs to be like that. So I can see return and now the count. That's just something you're gonna note. What's really amazing is it automatically figured it out for us as well. So now if we come back, you can see zero and zero. I now need to do something where I click on this, it adds the value. And when I click on this, it adds the value here. But I want these values to be different. So let's see if it works. So I'll say at click. And then I could say count plus plus. Let's see, save that. And now if I click it, it adds. And note, the number of dogs does not add because it's a separate count instance belonging to that other component. So if I click on this one, you can see that these values are different. Now you can see way more about components on view. If you just type in view into Google, and then view.js, and then type in components, and then component basics. Or you can scroll down along this sidebar and get to where it says component basics. And then it gives you a basic example. I did something that's just like this count. They did it in a little bit different syntax. This is not a single page of view instance. They put it as a template and kind of similar, but then you need to write all your HTML inside this template tag. And that doesn't look so good. So you can see pretty easy. So explore some of these things as ways that you can add to your components.